What do Boris Johnson, Jeremy Corbyn and even Margaret Thatcher have in common? They all had to make a maiden speech here in the House of Commons. That's the name of an MP's first ever speech. Here's Boris Johnson uh, so when he first in arrived in Parliament as MP for Henley uh, in 2001. I want to pay tribute, as is conventional in these speeches, to my predecessor. In the speech, it's traditional to abide by five conventions. Listen up closely in case you ever decide to become an MP. First of all, be nice to your predecessor. It's customary to pay tribute to your predecessor, regardless of party politics. Flattery is key. Here's Rishi Sunak on action man William Haig. Some have wondered about William Haig's future. Perhaps he will heed the advice of the Prime Minister, who suggested he ought to become the new James Bond. Secondly, be brief. Enough said. At number three, talk about your constituency a lot. Adding in some mouth-watering facts can entice your colleagues, as Conservative Alicia Kearns found when talking about her constituency's meaty delicacies. Towards the centre of the constituency is the rural capital of food, oh, yeah. Melton Mowbray <laughs> of yeah. Port Pie yeah. fame. Yeah. Or what about a famous former resident? The SNP's Myrie Black could cite a Scottish independence hero. William Wallace was born in my constituency. <laughs> At four, relate your speech to the debate in which you're speaking. I'm grateful for the opportunity to give my maiden speech today during this crucial budget debate. That was Conservative Andrea Leadsom in 2010. And at number five, try to avoid being party political or say anything controversial. But MPs don't always stick to that. Now I know conventionists for maiden speeches to avoid saying anything members opposite will find disagreeable. But I can't do that because my generation has only ever faced a future of rising rents, frozen wages and diminishing opportunities. Labour's Zara Sultana. In 2015, Heidi Allen, then a Conservative MP, used her maiden speech to criticise her own government. I believe the pace of these reforms is too hard and too fast. As these proposals stand, too many people will be adversely affected. Something must give. Perhaps not a total surprise, she left the Conservative Party four years later. Five points to think about. MPs can also ensure their speech stands out by marking a first. Here's Labour's Darren Jones. And now, so I am told, Mr Deputy Speaker, to the first ever Darren elected to this House of Commons. <laughs> and his colleague, Tanmanjit Desi. Slough, Mr Speaker, is a town of firsts. It elected the UK's first ever black lady mayor. And now, more than three decades later, it has elected the first ever <laughs> turban seat <laughs> to the British Parliament. 2020 saw the Conservative Sarah Britcliffe make the first maiden speech by video link. So along with making history as a first female MP for the area and the youngest Conservative MP in the country and the first Member of Parliament ever to make the maiden speech remotely from their own home. So a maiden speech has certain conventions attached to it and it's important to make a good first impression but you never know, like Boris Johnson, you could get to do the whole thing twice. First as MP for Henley in 2001, then again in 2015 as MP for Uxbridge and South Ryslip. I want to stress that this speech tonight, Mr Deputy Speaker, is not a maiden speech, but I've been specifically interrupted by... Uh, the speaker that whatever maiden status I may have once possessed was nonsense, <laughs> nonsense <laughs> passed away. 